This video is going to show us how to find the volume of a cylinder. So we have two cylinders up on the board. And at this point in your mathematical lives, it is expected that you know how to find the volume of a prism. It could be a rectangular prism. It could be a triangular prism. It could be, I don't know, a 57-sided prism. The same concept applies to all of them. How do we find the volume of any prism? What is this sort of generic catch-all rule that will help find the volume of any sized or any shaped prism? Yes, base sir? Base time height. It is not base time height, it is not, but you're close. You Area of the base time there you go. The volume of a prism is going to be the area of the base and we're going to multiply that times the height. As luck would have it, the same rule applies for the cylinder. So if you can remember how to find the volume of a prism, you, you know how to find the volume of a cylinder. It's going to be the area of the base times the height. The one, uh, one little tricky thing for the cylinder is what is the area of the base? What, what shape is the base, better yet? The shape of a, the base of a cylinder is always the same kind of shape. What kind of shape is it? It is circular, better known as a circle. OK. So to find the area of the base or find the area of a, of a circle, how do I find the area of a circle? Radius squared times pi. Radius squared times pi. So the area of a circle or the area of the base of a cylinder is going to be the radius squared times pi. All right. So how are we going to turn this into volume? Well, the volume is the area of the base times the height. So the volume of a cylinder is going to be the area of the base, which is described as pi r squared, because we have a circle, or r squared pi as it's been written already today. And what are we going to multiply r squared times pi? Jesse? The height. Actually. Uh, as luck would have it, this is the equation for finding the volume of a cylinder. It is r, uh, pi r squared h, or r squared pi h, or however you want to write it out. So let's use the radius and the height of our first cylinder to find the volume of this cylinder. Are you ready? Are you ready? OK, Beck is ready, so we'll go on. All right. So the volume of this cylinder is going to be equal to, what is the radius? What is the radius? Sophie? Five. Five. So the radius is 5 squared times pi. What is the height of this cylinder, Yvonne? Ten. Ten. All right. Not too bad. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally tells us that we must first deal with the exponents in this problem, because exponents comes before multiplication. So uh, 5 squared, what is 5 squared? Uh, it is 25. So the volume of this cylinder is going to be equal to 25 times pi times 10. Now here's the thing. Is it going to be easier to multiply 25 times pi or is it going to be easier to multiply 25 times 10? Or is it going to be easier to multiply pi times 10 first? Which is the easiest one of those three multiplication problems to do? One of them is much easier than the others. Matthew? 25 times 10. What is 25 times 10? So the volume of this cylinder right here is 25 times 10, which is 250 times pi. Now here's the beautiful thing. If the instructions do not specify that you are expected to round to a certain decimal place, or if the instructions do uh, say that you need to use 3.14 for, for pi, uh, then you need, if it says you don't have to do those two things, or if it doesn't specify how to give the answer, you can leave the answer just like this. 250 pi is called in terms of pi. So this answer right now is expressed 
in terms of pi. That's a T, and this is an E. There we go, in terms of pi. But, and, and at, since we are in the season of state standardized tests, uh, it is very likely that either it won't specify how to give the answer, in which case, give this answer, or you may be given a very long test. Get the answer in terms of pi, and then when you then move on to other questions, and then come back to this one. At least this way you know you have the correct answer, and then you can spend more time at the end once everything else is done. So, we want a complete answer. We want all the possible answers. So, Maggie, if it says in the instructions that we cannot give the answer in terms of pi, what am I going to do next? Um, and what is pi? 3.14. 3.14. So, if we do have to work with decimals, we will end up with 250 times, as Maggie pointed out, 3. 0.14. So what is 3.14 times 250? What is 3.14 times 250? Any time now. Oh, look at this. All right. Uh, William? Is it 78.3? 78.3. That seems a little low because it's 200. 50 times 3, so we're looking at a number that's sort of in the, two, the 750 range. Probably a little more than that, uh, because 3 times 250 is going to be 750, so it's going to be a little bit above that. So, uh, Aiden? 758. That does not seem right. Seven hundred. Let's double check. So for those of us with calculator, 3.14 times 250. So it should be 785, which is what I got earlier. Oops. Nothing's more embarrassing than having a video showing you doing poor uh, computation. So our volume is 785 what? 785 what? And here's the, the thing, because normally I'd say cookies, but I've really gotten into those little mini uh, one-bite cupcakes. So is it 785 little mini-bite, one-bite cu cupcakes? I wish. <laughs> I wish. What is it, Yvonne? 785 what? Uh, no, we, have, we don't have units. We have something very specific. Come on. Meters cubed. And you'll remember that all volumes are in whatever unit cubed. So again, this is meters cubed. All right, so I'm a little bit scared to go on to the next one since our computational skills seem to be lacking today. Let's, let's try the next one, and hopefully we'll have better luck. So here we go. So I'm going to shrink this a bit so at least we still have it to reference. So what is the equation for the volume of a cylinder? What is the equation that we can use for the volume of a cylinder? Pain? Radius squared times pi. Radius squared. All right. So let's plug in the numbers that we know. So volume is going to be equal to what's our radius, Charlotte? 16. So we have 16 squared times pi. What is our height? What is our height? 25. It's 25. Excellent. So which mul uh, what are we going to do first? Do we uh, do the exponent first or we do uh, multiplication first? Zach? No, we do the exponent like first. Like 16 so 16 oh, squared. 16 squared is? Uh, 256. 256. So the volume is equal to 256 pi times 25. So what's going to be easier, multiplying 256 times pi or 256 times uh, 25? What's going to be the best strategy, Grace? 
So we're going to multiply 2, 56 times 25. When I multiply 256 times 25, what do I end up with? I get 6,400. Now I haven't multiplied it by pi yet. And if the instructions do not specify how to show your answer, this would be an acceptable answer in terms of pi. But since we want to have, uh, cover all of our bases, let's go ahead and figure out the next one. Uh, let's multiply 6,400 times 3.14. So the volume of this second cylinder is going to be what, Carrie? 20,096 what? Oh, uh, cookies. Oh, I wish it was cookies. Meters. Cubed. Meters cubed. And here's the way to remember this. And incidentally, in terms of pi, you'd also have to have the meters cubed. Um, here's how to remember this. Volume, we're talking about three-dimensional shapes. What fits into three-dimensional shapes? So the volume will always be in your units cubed. Whereas area, or surface area, is talking about uh, two-dimensional shapes. So that will always be squared. 